It's a funny thing about life. Once you begin to take note of the things you're grateful for, you begin to lose sight of the things that you lack. Germany can't. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Trail Connection Podcast. This week, I went on a solo hike out in an area nearby where I live and just wanted to take some time to explore the area close near me in my own backyard uh, a little bit more. We talked a couple episodes back about uh, the Tampa area not really having a whole lot to offer and I've kind of made it my quest to uh, prove that wrong because I think that we do. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a couple minutes but before we get started I want to share a couple more hot tips so again I, I just got to say I think this is awesome that we're starting to get some feedback from from listeners and followers and people that have been tuning in and wanting to offer their own suggestions and stuff because that's what this is all about the trail connection is about learning from one another and connecting through common love for the outdoors so one of my listeners wanted to follow up with the discussion that we had on episode three about dry bags and um Joseph offered some really good suggestions in that episode, but this listener wanted to uh, also throw in a couple couple tips. So the the main thing that he suggested is when he takes his bags and packs them up, the last thing that he puts in the bag is either a rag or a washcloth or some kind of material that they can he can pull out and uh, wipe his hands or his arms off before he even dives into the bag. And I thought that was a really great suggestion, and I wanted to pass that on to the audience and. Uh, um, I think that it's extremely helpful, and I plan on u- using that the next time that uh, I need to pack up a drive bag, especially when I'm taking this electronic gear with me anywhere to film more episodes. So thanks a lot, Justin. I appreciate that information. Also, I had uh, another listener, Ben, write in in response to um, the wet sleeping bag <laughs> deal that we had in uh, episode five. And I talked about on that Appalachian Trail hike how... Uh, I sweat so much whenever I was hiking that around the waistband, um, specifically around my back, um, you know, the lower part of the bag, my sweat was kind of seeping in, and that's where my sleeping bag is kept. And so um, Ben wrote in, and he said he actually sent me a link to um, a Mountain Hardware brand uh, backpack that is basically an, the entire thing is composed as a as a dry bag, so everything inside is protected. And um, it, it negates the need for um, an additional, like, rain fly or, um, you know, rain cover for your backpack. And it also keeps your body moisture from seeping into your bag, which I thought that was really neat. Um, and really, that just comes down to a matter of preference. I mean, I, I personally like the, the Osprey bag that I have. It's really lightweight, very breathable on my back. Um, and everything is very pliable. Um, it, it stretches and gives a lot, so you can pack stuff in really good. So, I mean, I, I personally um, will just end up going the route with putting my sleeping bag in a dry bag. Um, but, um, you know, for anybody else out there that might have a, a serious <laughs> issue with their stuff getting wet, um, might want to look into that. Um, ben spoke very highly of Mountain Hardware products. I've never used them before, but I'll probably test, uh, test some out here in the future to be able to offer my own opinion on it. So wanted to throw that out there as well. And uh, so, again, thanks, guys. I really appreciate your input. And everybody else, anybody listening, be sure to write in or, or shoot me a comment or a message somewhere. Let me know if you got any tips that we can share on the show because I really appreciate it. All right, so 
in episode four on the uh, the first part of our drive up to the Appalachian Trail, uh, Brad and I discussed a lot of different things about the gear we were taking, the area we were going to, and um, we talked about you know the, the the benefits of being up in the mountains and getting out of the Tampa area, and um, we we discussed a little bit about there not being a whole lot to offer um, here locally for hikers and. That, that might be the case as far as like elevation and change of terrain and all that kind of stuff. And it is a, it's a little frustrating sometimes with the amount of water that stands in this area because it being such a low altitude. But um, I got to thinking after we had that discussion that I, I don't know if I was giving Florida a fair shot, um, especially the Tampa area. And so... I've been doing some some research and doing some discussion with uh, some of my my buddies and um, my buddy Justin, the same one who who gave me the information about the uh, the dry bags, um, has actually he shot me a bunch of really neat areas here in the local area to check out, um, and one just recently um, that I decided I want to come check out today. So I'm at Colt Creek State Park today. And I've never been here before. It's only about 25 minutes from my house. And um, I didn't do really any any research ahead of time. I just found it on Google Maps and, and drove up to check it out. And um, I got to tell you, man, this is this is a really pleasant hidden area back here. Because, yeah, it is, it is a pine forest. And there's a lot of pine trees in the area, a lot of oak trees and stuff. But um, it's just a a beautiful beautiful and well-maintained park uh, it's got camping and kayaking um, it's equestrian stuff as well so you can ride horses out here um, there's a couple different clubhouses they offer primitive camping and um, I just think that uh, it's one of it's one of those little hidden gems because I, di- I didn't know anything about it and he mentioned it to me and with it being so close it was it was worth a drive to check it out And didn't really know what to expect when I got here, but I mean, just uh, an afternoon today. Today is a beautiful day, beautiful day with the cool temperatures, bright, sunny sky, hardly any clouds in the sky and uh, couldn't be a better day for hiking. And so I jumped in truck, drove up here and getting out, just walking around. I mean, I was blown away by the beauty out here. It's there's a lot of open pasture with grown, grown weeds and stuff and. Um, all of the trails are about as wide as a vehicle and they keep them well maintained. A lot of them, um, that I've experienced so far is been mostly grass, um, that they keep mowed down. So pleasant to walk on. Um, uh, you don't have to be a super experienced hiker to enjoy it and, um, you know, not real narrow or anything. And I, I mean, I prefer more of a like rugged, rustic type feel when I'm hiking, I like feeling like I'm going someplace that not many people have been before, but that doesn't negate the fact that there's still beautiful things that you can experience from uh, from a spot that is well maintained. So, um, so far, I'm impressed. I think that uh, it'll be a neat place to bring the family back to. I, I'm, I'm planning on booking a couple uh, campsites or a campsite for my family. It's a great spot to bring the kids because uh, you don't have to worry too much about, you know, real uh, real tight quarters and all that so um, it definitely will be something that I bring the family for and it's close enough to home that you know we can do it kind of a last minute deal as long as the site's got availability so um, but I took a short little hike once I parked the truck over towards around the Mac Lake is what it's called and um, you got to check out the the YouTube video or the the Instagram page for Trail Connection to see some of the, the videos and like I mentioned it being a beautiful day I couldn't have timed it better with the sun um, everything was bright and vibrant beautiful shine on the lake water and um, just a really pleasant pleasant hike and it's it's just super peaceful out here there's nobody out here really at all I saw a couple other vehicles when I came in the park but um, it's such a large area uh, I don't expect to really come across anybody and it's not very popular uh, as far as like being a really high traffic area. Uh, I think a lot of people don't even realize that this park is here. So, um, which kind of brings me to my next point. There are so many hidden spots across the area and, and no matter where you live, I mean, 
there are state parks or, or wilderness parks all over the place um, in a lot of different areas uh, across the country. And I, I think that that's awesome that I'm not a huge proponent of like a lot of government things, but I do appreciate the public lands portion that, uh, that our tax dollars go to because I think it's really important for that stuff to be preserved because there's so much construction and so much development all over the place that's really kind of taken away from the uh, the nature that we have in this country to, to enjoy. And so, um, you know, I, I support as many of these areas that can pop up. You know, this, this particular park actually used to be a cattle pasture. It was owned by, privately owned by a family who did cattle ranching for a long time and um, about, I guess it was about uh, 12 years ago or 13 years ago, they sold it to the state and made it a, a wilderness park. And so um, I'm glad that they did because it's, it's a great spot. So I, I haven't had a chance to explore the whole property, but uh, they've got a lot of hiking trails and, and stuff that I plan on checking out. So I'm excited about that. But if you just pull up a Google map on your phone or on the computer, just look for green blotted areas. I mean, they're all over the place. And, you know, by doing a quick search like that, you know, there, there's probably at least a dozen or half a dozen um, wilderness parks or state parks within like a 40 mile radius of where I live in, in Tampa. So um, I'll probably be doing a lot of these like day hike type deals where I'm going and checking out these areas to try to build a catalog a little bit about the, the areas here local. Um, and so, um, it, it reminds me, uh, so I've got, I've got this other follower, um, on Instagram that I've given a shout out to before, but I'm going to give him another one here because I guess here recently, just with this discussion I'm having today, um, it really made me appreciate more what he's actually doing. So, um, Dan, Dan Laurel is a follower of mine and on, uh, Instagram, he's got a blog site out in Texas and he kind of goes around and does, um, what I'm talking about. He hits all the state parks and hiking trails and hiking spots around in in Texas. And he's got a great blog. It's got a lot of information. It's kind of like a one-stop source of, um, you know, suggestions of places to go out there in that area that I'm not going to go that route. I'm not going to build a catalog like that, but I will try to keep track of all the places that I find throughout this show and everything. But, you know, people who do that and, and people who take the time to do that, I think, um, are really beneficial to, to others who don't really know where to begin and uh, who might be overwhelmed by um, the amount of information that's out there. And to be honest, I mean, these, these, these state park websites and stuff, they don't offer a tremendous amount of information. I mean, there's enough for you to kind of get the gist of it, but um, they don't really offer that personal touch that, you know, someone who's actually gone and experienced it and checked it out could offer, um, you know, recommendations and that kind of thing. So anyway, Dan, keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. That's, uh, that's really awesome. And, um, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out his blog, if you live in the Texas area, go check it out. <clears throat> All right. So again, I mentioned, um, you know, making it my mission here recently to kind of come and and check out areas that are in in my own backyard and uh, that are close to home and I was thinking on the drive out here that um, you know to kind of tie this into the discussion that we've been having over the last you know month or two kind of going back to the first couple episodes the whole reason that I'm doing this um, you know, is to find a balance and find peace, um, <clears throat> and, and, and find some opportunities to, uh, learn and, and explore and connect with people around me, but also connect with my family and my kids. And, um, they're at an age right now where I can't really take them on a Appalachian Trail hike. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be very fun for anyone, I don't think. Uh, they're just too young right now. And they definitely have the desire to do it. It's just, I don't think that they're physically big enough, you know, to handle something like that yet. And I might not be giving them credit, but I mean, 
they're five. My oldest two are five and six years old. So I mean, I think I think I'm I've got the right context here. So anyway, um, I really I need to try to start finding stuff that I can do with them now. Um, and so places like this um, are the perfect spot to to do um, any kind of hiking or or camping with them because it's it's flat, it's open. Um, I can pack the, a little backpack with some snacks or, you know, something small, some small piece of gear to kind of get them the, the feel that they're, they're doing what daddy's doing. And, um, so this will probably be kind of the training ground for them, you know, parks like this. So going back to the discussion, you know, on some of these earlier episodes and kind of, um, reflecting a little bit on, on where I'm at. So, you know, I, I've got the trail name Dreamweaver for a reason. Um, and being a dreamer or being someone who is very much a planner or a long-term big picture kind of person, it's a blessing and a curse um, because I can take something so small and just blow it up into a, you know, a great massive production, uh, you know, some, a small little idea. I can take something and just run with it. And that's really good in a lot of aspects because it allows me to push and to grow and to challenge and to constantly want to make things better. So the negative side to that is discontentment. And uh, that is something that I struggle with hardcore. And it's been really difficult to find peace and balance when you're miserable with the area that you live in and you're constantly wanting something better like bigger mountains or better trails or better weather or you name it um and so like i've come constantly in this pendulum balance of uh you know being super stoked about wanting to get out and move on and be adventurous and check out new things and experience the, these great incredible places all over the country but then like the 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 other side of that is like the survivalist mentality of dealing with the conditions you're given playing the cards you're dealt and right now this point in time I I can't uproot my family and go somewhere across the country to experience some of this stuff we can take trips and we can travel you know when the kids get old enough to do it but we're still talking a couple years down the road where, you know, my kids could really get out and, and push themselves and, and do multi-day hikes and camping trips with me, um, you know, in the mountains, which I can't wait for and I'm super excited about. But I also, I need to, I need to try to swing it back and be more of the survivalist mentality where right now the moment we're in, the, the season of life that I'm in is I've got young kids, I've got um, a lot of inexperience and I've still got a lot of room to grow. Um, and we have, you know, a kid that's less than a year old. So that's going to make it very difficult for my wife to be able to do a lot of the things that I want to do, especially the fact that this kid's not even sleeping all the way through the night. So sometimes I just need to, I need to really pump the brakes a little bit on, um, my ambition and, and like what I'm wanting to do. It's not that I can't accomplish it. It's just it's going to be a little bit longer timeline. And so going back to this, this thing about the survivalist mentality, like right now, you know, we live in the Tampa area and there's not a whole lot of mountains over here. There's just not. It's Florida. It's flat. We're not, not close to, uh, close to a mountain range at all. You know, the, the closest mountains are about eight or nine hours away. That's doable, you know, for a weekend trip and, and we can do that. But I need to make the most of the, the time that I have right now and the location that I'm in right now. And so doing things like I'm doing today, going and checking out these wilderness parks that are, you know, within an hour or within a couple hours away. And um, doing my exploring there and getting some experience and testing the waters with my kids. So I bring them out here and give them a backpack with 10, 15 pounds in it and see how they do see how far they can go. And that's not much of an investment because it's literally 30 minutes away from the house. I mean, we could do it in a couple hours and 
worst case scenario, they get tired, like carry them back to the truck, throw them in there and go home and it's no big deal. But you take an eight or an hour, nine hour drive and you go up to Georgia or North Carolina or something like that, Tennessee, and you invest all this money and this time into taking this trip. And then you have this disappointment of people being too tired to do it or like not being able to make the full trip the full trip because you know we're just rushing and so I'm what I want to talk about today and the point the main point that I'm wanting to focus on today is is just finding peace and contentment in your own backyard and I'm talking to myself I'm preaching to, to, to myself here because I struggle with that a lot and you know, there's there's so much beauty and and so much um, to experience just in this area alone. I mean, I've talked a lot about um, what I've got planned for this this podcast, and we're gonna do some traveling. We're gonna, we're gonna definitely gonna do some episodes up in the, in the mountains, do some more Appalachian Trail trips, and ultimately my goal is to get out west, and I want to do that. I'm planning on doing that, but. There's, there's so much to offer here locally. And so over the next few weeks, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff here in, in Tampa. And um, we'll, we'll do some more, do some exploring. We'll check out some other places like this that are close by. We'll go do some beach camping um, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the, um, the struggles, I guess, that, that we have with with camping in Florida or hiking in Florida, but, um, we'll get back on the trail and we're going to get, we're going to get back up North and, um, do some more sections of the Appalachian trail. And eventually, you know, I'll work towards, uh, getting out West, which is something that I really, really want to do. Um, and I'm hoping that I can accomplish by the end of this first season. So, so yeah, something that I really like about, uh, about this spot is, um, kind of how primitive it feels so a lot of these state parks and campgrounds you know actual campgrounds they're they're developed I mean you have you have a um, public restroom that is in the center of all the campsites the campsites are right on top of one another they've got electricity and water that run to all of them and um, that's the kind of camping that I grew up doing outside of you know my backyard or whatever we didn't really do too much like what I'm talking about now and um you know, there's some there's some great spots around here that for that, but um, I like I like getting out here and feeling like I'm kind of out in the woods and away from it all. And um, so this this spot here is kind of a cool balance because what I introduced you guys to in episode two, I mean, that is like literally just hiking out in the middle of the woods with like that's just a patch of wilderness that I found. Um, this is more, you know, it's, it's a park and there's amenities here, but it, it's set up in a way that like, it's kind of a halfway mark. You know, it's not quite taking my kids just out in the middle of the woods. I can bring them out here, bring my wife out here and do primitive camping, but, um, it's not, you know, hiking through a swamp or, or, you know, taking, all these people who have not really had a whole lot of experience doing what I'm doing and kind of throwing them, you know, to the wolves. This is kind of a middle ground kind of thing. So I'm excited to check out more spots like this and kind of slowly introduce my family into this world that, um, that I've kind of started chasing after the last couple years. And so, so as I'm kind of following the progression of this journey that I've introduced you guys to, that is the trail connection. Um, I'm wanting to, to kind of develop as I go. Um, I'm, I'm giving you glimpses of the snapshots of the, the path that I've already taken to kind of get to where I'm at now. And so, you know, I gave you the background story and I took you to my, my secret spot, um, that I kind of go to when I, when I need some alone time, solo time or whatever. And, um, kind of showed you a little bit about the, uh, the whole kayak journey, you know, why, why I chose that. And, 
um, that whole first year that I had to kind of build gear and uh, of inventory of, of gear and gain experience and all that kind of led up to you know my first trip ever on the Appalachian Trail and so that two-part episode we just did was kind of a nod to that and um, so what happened you know after after that first trip well uh, a lot of reflection and on you know things that I learned from the trail things that I learned from that experience and um, kind of the path forward so to speak and so um, you know, following that model here you know I I wanted to do some reflection on you know some lessons learned and uh, it's it's all about just being real and genuine with where you're at and it's not easy for me to sit here and say over and over again you know that uh, that I'm a dreamer and that you know sometimes I struggle with certain things and I mean it's never easy pointing out your own flaws but I think it's extremely healthy to realize them and admit them Um, and this is something that I'm just now kind of learning at this point in my life I mean I've always been very confident and um, tried to, I tried to stay humble a lot, you know, growing up, but there were definitely moments of pride and, and a little arrogance at times. And um, I think I'm finally just kind of coming around to the fact that like, (sighs) there's certain character traits that I have that have put limitations on what I've been able to accomplish or made made my happiness uh, suffer because I was just wanting things too soon. And it's not necessarily that like I struggle with this instant gratification epidemic that we have going on in our culture, especially in my generation, because I realize the fact that like things take hard work to get, I mean, for you to get them and like, levels that you accomplish and levels you you get to come with time and experience and and all of that and so I've I've been frustrated a lot over my early years and and adulthood um, just because of, I guess of discontentment of where I'm currently at because I'm always looking forward for greatness you know and you know we kind of can cut our own paths and and blaze our own trails through life and uh you know no one can tell you that you can't do something i mean if you put your mind to it i I firmly believe you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to but there are limitations and there are hurdles and there are things that like you have challenges you have to face and sometimes one of those challenges is time and for me, that's been the greatest challenge is wanting things sooner than I guess I'm supposed to have them or, or should have them. And so, again, going back to this, this discussion a little bit about, uh, you know, balance between, between um, you know, being a dreamer versus a survivalist, like, I... I operate so much of my time in the daydreaming, like planning, forecasting, big picture, where am I going, where do I, like, what are my goals kind of thing, and not so much living in the here and now. And so, you know, I've talked about it you know, in a couple of my episodes already, and I made mention of it on my, uh, my little mini blogs on Instagram, like, it's all about getting out and, and doing, and, like, not, not just sitting back, like, waiting for the perfect opportunity, but if you, if you want to do something, you know, go for it, and I'm not going to sit around being miserable and, you know, bummed, because we don't live in the mountains, and, you know, I can't take my kids to see a mountain view 
this afternoon, but you know, I can, I can bring them outside to a spot like this and take them to the edge of the water and let them, let them see the sun glistening off the water. We live 45 minutes from the beach. I mean, most people around the country, and I realize this, you know, travel for great distances to see the beaches that are right in my back backyard. And so, and then things like this too. I mean, this isn't, this isn't anything like Yosemite or, you know, Glacier National Park or anything like that, but it, it's got its own unique beauty. And that's what I love about the national parks and all of these pockets of nature that around, around the country is they all offer their own unique, you know, contribution to this beautiful world that we live in. And, um, and so I, I don't know. I just, uh, I need, I really need to focus more on just being happy with where I'm at right now and capitalizing on those opportunities to, you know, make the memories while I've got the time because, you know, it's fleeting and it goes by so fast. And before we know it, you know, we might not have any more and, and, you know, we're not guaranteed the next day that we have or the next breath that we have all the time, um, and everyone is a blessing. And so for me, operating in this whole dreamer realm and, like, not really being as thankful as I should be for what I have right now, right here, um, that's really just doing myself a disservice. And so if you're like me and you, you have grand plans and or you're not really crazy about where you're at and what you're doing you know i don't want to sound i don't want to sound cliche but you just really got to do the best you can with what you got and you know you know sometimes you get dealt great cards sometimes you don't and um i've been i'm very blessed i'm a very blessed man and i understand that and um so for me it's wrapping my head around like the stuff that I dream about and the stuff that I want to do with my family, we'll get there and we'll do it sometime. It might not be in the next year, it might not be in the next few years, but that can't stop me and that won't stop me now from spending these moments that I have with them, making the best of them, making memories that my kids are going to remember. And um, it just... It's priceless. So the other day, I uh, I took my three oldest kids out with me um, back to an old fishing spot that I used to go to all the time growing up. It's li- literally right behind my house, um, maybe a 15, 20-minute walk back there to the river. And um, it's got a nice little open area, you know, big wide trails to get to, kind of like this to where there's not a whole lot of danger. And... Um, I took them out there. We were in the woods maybe 45 minutes. And that meant so much to them that I took them back there. And they came up to the water. You know, it's nothing special. It's the side of the Hillsborough River. You know, it's probably only about 50 feet wide at that point and open up a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's a nice, peaceful spot. But they were blown away, and they loved it, and they thought that it was the greatest thing, you know. And on the way back, um, you know, I let my daughter kind of take the lead. She's really, she's a lot like me. She's very inv- adventurous, and uh, I love that about her. But she wanted to lead the pack. And she wanted to kind of get us back. They were very confident that they knew exactly where they were. So I figured, okay, yeah, go ahead. So I let her run up ahead of us a little bit and kind of blaze the trail. And she did a great job, and she um, she got us back to pretty much where we needed to go I I helped her kind of get back on path but once we did and she saw the opening in the trail and saw that we were heading back towards the truck her eyes lit up and she got so excited and she's like I did dad I I led two kids and an adult back to the truck out of the woods and she thought that that was the coolest thing And, and that was a week ago and she's brought it up every single day since then and so it's things like that that just drive this point home that 
they're not operating in the same realm that I am. They're not focused on, you know, where we could go. They're focused on where we are right now. And uh, you learn so much from kids. You really do. And um, so I need I need to focus more on that. And, and so the whole point of this, I know I've kind of been rambling a lot, but the whole point of this is really to just find peace in your own backyard and be content with what you have, make the best of it. Um, because those experiences will come. If you have a desire to do something and a drive, you'll do it. It might not happen tomorrow, but it will happen. And, you know, a great example for me for that is that, that my first trip on the Appalachian Trail, all I did was set the, set the goal. And it took me a year to get the gear and to feel confident enough to do it but it was an aspiration it was a it was a goal that I set that I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish and it happened and now it's happened twice and I plan on doing a whole lot more of it and now we're getting to a point where I I have the experience and the confidence and kind of know what all goes into it to do something like that and then by gaining more experience and exposure through the people that I meet and bring on this show and have discussions about um, that type of stuff, like it's only going to get better and better. So take Brad's advice from the last episode, and if you have any kind of desire at all to do stuff like this, just set a goal, set a simple goal that if you live in an area that's within 30 minutes or 45 minutes of a nature preserve or a wilderness park or something like that, you don't have to have all the gear to get going and get outside just go check it out spend a couple hours walking around you know then just pick up a couple pieces of gear here and there you know and and just take the time to acquire and build the confidence and walk the distances and you know get in tune with what you're capable of doing and then take on something that um, you know a, a big goal like that and so I I know that I struggle with you know elevation hikes and it's because I don't live in elevation and I don't do it very often but next year I want to be hiking in Colorado and in Utah and I want to go out to some of these bigger national parks out in the north uh, the northwest and experience all that stuff but I know that if I went today like I'd probably be miserable just with the conditions you know of how how my body would handle it. So I'm again going back to this thing about being a dreamer. Sometimes I I set the bar so high that the results are just unattainable and I know that I do that sometimes. I'm, my confidence is extreme sometimes to where I'm on a little unrealistic about what I'm capable of doing. So anyway, personal re- revelations from the outdoors anyway all right so our next episode coming up in a couple weeks um, we're going to be doing some cooking and I'm very excited about that Uh, my friend Justin that I mentioned earlier in the episode uh, will be joining me and we're going to be talking a little bit about campfire cooking and we'll cook a couple meals you know I'll probably uh I'll probably have my own and he'll have his own and we'll talk a little bit about that and the value that comes from rustic camping meals so i'm excited about that one it'll be coming out just in time with everybody eating turkey uh the week before so uh, be sure to check that out so uh i teased a little bit about uh some exciting news for the trail connection uh, on my instagram account earlier this week and i'll give you a quick little snippet of that um, so I'm going to be introducing something called mini casts in the next few weeks on the off weeks that the full episodes air. And so what those are going to be is basically a five to 10 minute video that come out, uh, in the studio. Uh, we're putting together a cool little set, um, that focuses more in detail on like, um, you know, various topics. So, I'm going to take that opportunity to kind of dive in specifically to like, uh, you know, a question came up about 
what do you mean you guys signed in on the trail? Like, what does that, what does that entail? So we'll just kind of talk a little bit about that. And then also, um, you know, maybe do some gear reviews or, you know, my deep thoughts with Tim Garland kind of thing. Um, and so those will be coming out, coming out on our YouTube channel and also on Instagram TV on the off weeks, um, that the, the regular full podcasts come out. Um, So if you haven't yet, then be sure to subscribe to our podcast channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or go follow us on Instagram, Facebook, your your favorite social media app, and stay connected. I'm Tim Garland, and this is the Trail Connection Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe right here. And if you want to check out some of our other videos, you can see them here or here. And if you also want to help out the show a little bit and be a subscriber of our Patreon account, you can do that right down here. Thanks, guys.